I'm Steve Pantel, Senior Technical Marketing Architect at VMware. This video is part of our Deploying Azure VMware Solution series, part one of four covering the process of deploying AVS with the Landing Zone Accelerator. In this video, we'll cover what the Landing Zone Accelerator is and why you should use it, the high-level deployment process, and some of the naming and network planning considerations necessary before we begin. What is the Landing Zone Accelerator and why should you use it? Well, the standard way of deploying Azure VMware Solution is going right through the Azure portal searching for the Azure VMware Solution service, clicking Create, and stepping through the wizard. And this works fine, but this UI-driven, one-off approach is a better fit for proof-of-concept environments or smaller environments that just won't grow beyond a single private cloud. For larger environments, enterprise-scale environments, where you may need to stamp out many AVS private clouds and connect into complex network topologies, Microsoft has developed a cloud adoption framework for Azure meant to provide proven guidance and reference practices to drive successful adoption at scale. Part of this cloud adoption framework is the concept of Azure Landing Zone architectures, blueprints that support common customer journeys and follow key design principles across eight key design areas. Billing and tenancy, identity and access management, network topology and connectivity, resource organization, security, management, governance, and platform automation or DevOps. The Landing Zone Accelerator for Azure VMware Solution is a collection of templates, design guidelines, and reference implementations aligned to the Cloud Adoption Framework. Using the Landing Zone Accelerator supports deployment consistency at scale through automation. We will use the Landing Zone Accelerator to deploy an Azure VMware Solution environment that looks like this. We'll deploy into the West US region, creating separate resource groups for networking, break glass administration, the private cloud object, and operational dashboards. This environment will be connected to our on-premises data center via ExpressRoute Global Reach using an existing ExpressRoute connection. When we use these templates for deployment, we'll need to make some decisions up front about resource naming. We'll select a prefix that will be used to generate names for the deployed resources. We'll also need to deploy an address space. We'll need a slash 22 block to assign to the AVS private cloud. The provisioning process will automatically carve this up into networks for private cloud management, HCX, vSAN, vMotion, ExpressRoute peering, and other uses. We'll need a VNet to connect AVS into, and we'll be deploying a new VNet, so we'll need new IP space assigned to it. We'll also need to create a subnet called Gateway Subnet that'll be used to host the virtual network gateway that'll connect to the AVS Express route. We'll be deploying Azure Bastion and a Jumpbox VM to do break glass administration, so we'll also need a subnet for the Azure Bastion service. In the next two videos, we'll cover registering the resource provider and requesting host quota. Then we'll cover the actual deployment process, as well as connecting into our vSphere environment and then connecting our vSphere environment to our on-premises data center. And we'll show that two ways, using the accelerator through the Azure portal and using the accelerator templates with Terraform. 